I stood shirtless at the bathroom mirror in the apartment I shared with Catherine. She was out of town for the weekend with friends. On the sink, I had placed a pair of toenail scissors and a styptic pencil, the kind of men used to close shaving nicks by burning them shut. I examined my face, turning my head from side to side. I couldn't decide which one to start with. On the left side of my face, there were two moles, one just above my eye and one below. On the right side, there was a mole between my right sideburn and my ear, and one a little lower down. The last one was to the left of my chin. I decided to start with the one by my ear, since it was the least obvious, in case it went wrong. I picked up the toenail scissors and held them against my skin, with the mole in between the blades. I took a deep breath. Then I slowly squeezed the scissors closed. At first, the mole bulged between the small shears. Then it disappeared. I looked down at the sink, trying to find the mole, but it wasn't there. This confused me. I hadn't expected the mole to come flying off, like a thick toenail cut away will sometimes do. I figured it would drop straight down. I scanned the sink again, and then the floor. I didn't want to leave a mole lying around. <laughs> that would be untidy. <laughs> I stood up from the floor, and then I saw it. It was lying on the sink, but it was hard to see. On my face, it had been a medium brown color. But cut off, it was a pale white, nearly the same color as the porcelain. I went to press it against my forefinger and pick it up. Just then it was joined by a large red splat. I looked up in the mirror and saw a trickle of blood running down my face. I glanced down again and a second bright red drop fell a few inches from the first. I took some toilet paper and pressed it to my face over the small wound where the mole had been. Then I picked up the stitching pencil. I pressed the pencil on a cut and rubbed it in. It burned, but only slightly. Brian and I lived together in Brighton during college. We spent many lazy days slouching around the kitchen table, drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes, and talking about nothing much. One time we fell under the subject of my appearance and what was wrong with it. <laughs> well, I have a big nose, I said, and that's a defect. Yeah, Brian said. It is kind of wide, but what about the profile? I shrugged and he told me to turn my head to the side. Well, your nose isn't that bad in profile, but your weak chin kind of ruins that. <laughs> I never thought of myself as having a weak chin, but it seemed plausible enough. Then Brian leaned in closer. What is that on your face? A mole? Yeah, there are two right there, I said, pointing them out as I spoke. I guess that's not your good side, Brian said. And then, turn your head the other way. I turned my head and he said, oh, there's a mole there too. I nodded. So I guess you don't have a good side, he said. And I laughed, Sorry, man. I shrugged it off. No need to apologize if what you're saying is true, I said. Brian heard my tone and winced a little. Maybe not, he said, but I still shouldn't have said it. The bleeding stopped and I examined what was left. The entire mole was gone, flushed to my face. Looking right at it, it didn't look great. A purplish-white mix of dried blood and the styptic. But when I turned my head, there was nothing there. Unlike the mole, which had stood out in profile relief. This was a real improvement. I picked up the off-white remains of the mole and dropped it in the toilet. I scanned my face, looking for the next one to remove. I switched to the left side of my face and brought the scissors up to the mole above my eye. When I sliced it off, it also fell right under the sink, pale white. After cauterizing with a stitcher pencil to stop the bleeding, I picked it up and flicked it into the toilet with the first. I examined my face and tried to imagine what scar would remain in a couple of days. I decided it would probably be fine. My father and I were sitting in the kitchen my senior year of high school. I see you cut yourself shaving, he said. Yeah, I did, I said. It's annoying because there's a mole there, and I can't really shave around it. You know, if you went to a doctor, he can get rid of that for you. Like how, I said. Oh, they can just freeze it with liquid nitrogen, and it will come right off, he explained. 
This seemed implausible to me, even though my father said it with great confidence. You should bring that up with your doctor, he advised me further, and get it taken care of. I nodded my head, suggesting I would do just that. But I was 17 and had not seen a doctor since I broke my arm in eighth grade. I didn't know the name of my health insurance provider or an appropriate doctor to see. I suppose I could have asked my father for that information, but I didn't. <laughs> it felt like the 20 minutes of effort had taken all day. I kept taking long breaks to stare over the scabs on the moles I'd already removed and look at the ones I still had to deal with. The first couple had had really clean lines on the edge where my skin ended and the mole began. But the last one was less distinct and when I cut it, the result wasn't as good. There was still a bump there and I almost tried to cut it a little deeper, but I didn't want to leave a hole in my face. I saved the mole on my chin for last. It was square in the middle of my face, so whatever happened with it was going to be very obvious. I wondered if I should wait a few days to see how the others healed up before cutting it away. I looked down at the toilet at the moles I was already rid of. They were floating below the surface of the water, translucent like tiny jellyfish. I flushed them down. Then I turned back to the mirror to finish the job. Can I ask you something? Catherine said, interrupting me while I was watching the football game. <coughs> sure. She sat down and looked me in the eye. I was thinking about if we ever had kids or if we had a daughter, she said slowly. Well, if she had one of those things on her face, Catherine trailed off, making a sort of grimace. I cut her off. You mean a mole? I said, lifting my hand to my face and pressing along with my thumb. Yeah, a mole, she confirmed. Well, I want us to take you to a doctor right away to get it removed. I nodded. I mean, I wouldn't want her to have that on her face, you know? I nodded again. Yeah, Catherine, that would suck. <laughs> if that happens, we should get it taken care of right away. Catherine smiled at me, relieved. Then she looked a little embarrassed. I mean, a little girl wants to be pretty, you know? It matters more. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean, I said. Then I returned my attention to the game. I didn't think there was much else to say. I was finally ready to cut that last mole off my chin. I held the scissors with the arc of the blades lying down so that the tip stood a bit off my face. For the last time that day, I snipped away. But it wasn't like the other times. It was tougher, and I had to press harder to cut through, and there was more blood. I grabbed a tissue and dabbed at it, but as soon as I pulled it away, the hole filled with blood quickly before I could tell if I had cut off the entire mole. Even though I couldn't see very clearly, I could tell there was an edge along the high side of it that hadn't been removed. I decided to trim that edge before trying to stop the bleeding. I leaned forward, letting the blood drip down my chin into the sink. Then I cut at the edge and spun a thick wad of toilet paper off the roll, holding it against my face, pressing hard. I started to feel sick. The pain was bearable, and I hadn't lost that much blood, really, just a few drops, but I was stricken with fear. I imagined a hideous scar in the middle of my face and how I would have to admit I had put it there myself. Suddenly the whole project seemed idiotic and disgusting. <laughs> Who cuts moles off their own damn face with toilet? <laughs> I wondered what people would think and how I would explain it. I took a deep breath and tried to settle down. I held the styptic pencil under the faucet to soften up the surface into a paste. Then I smeared it on extra thick. It burned like hell. I had to do it three times before the bleeding stopped. I slumped against the sink, worn out from the effort and the thought that I had made a terrible mistake. I went to the bedroom and lay down on my back, stretching my arms out to either side. I wanted to fall asleep, but I didn't want to turn over and peel away a scab. Catherine was very fond of the pillowcases. By the time Catherine returned home, 
My face was mostly healed. Two of the moles had come away so cleanly, you could hardly tell they were ever there. And even the one on my chin looked okay. Catherine walked into the living room to kiss hello, but she stopped just short, taken aback. The moles are gone, she said. Yeah, I said. I removed them. <laughs> you removed them, she said. I just felt like it. She examined my face. It looks better, she decided. I nodded at her inanely, trying to gauge her reaction. I decided she was trying to be encouraging, so I mustered my best smile and said, I'm glad you think so. Woo! Author of the Nightmares, Neil McDonough.